Hello and welcome to a video from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. I'm Chris with a K. There's a link in the description to my website. And today we're working with game pads, joystick, controllers, and uh, we're actually going to write a shell script that will uh, interact with these. And uh, so recently I was uh, upgrading my arcade here at home and uh, I wanted to have a shell script that I could control without breaking out a keyboard just using the controls on the arcade. I ended up going a different route and just creating something in Godot, but I was like, could I write a shell script that allows me to interact, you know, receive signals from the game controller without having to map them as keys on the keyboard, which is something you can do and I've gone over in the past. The answer is yes, but I'm gonna, we're going to go over some basic uh, game controller stuff before we even get to that. So in your repositories, you probably have two different packages. One is called um, Joystick, and the other one's called JS test dash GTK. So if we do an app search for JS test, you will see that we have JS test GTK, which I have installed. You have to have app two installed. Use whatever package manager you use. And again, you can also search for joystick. Okay. And joystick will bring up a few things. Uh, side note, this xorg, uh, x server to xorg input joystick. If you install that, I'm pretty sure that that will make it so when your computer loads into a graphical interface, your Game controller will actually control the mouse and keyboard if that's something you need. If you find your system controlling the mouse on your system you don't want to, see if that's installed, and if it is, uninstall it. Anyway, uh, inside the joystick package is a program, because it's got a few programs. One of them is called JS Test. Anytime you see, so GTK, GTK is a library of uh, packages for creating GUI interfaces, graphical interfaces. It's just one of a few that we have as options. So if you ever see a program called something dash GTK, that means that this is probably, the first part of it is probably a shell command and this program with the GTK is just a graphical front end for it. And sure enough, when you install joystick, uh, JTest is going to be in there as one of the programs. So let's go ahead and start with JS test dash GTK though. So we're just gonna run that program. It opens it up here. I have two controllers plugged in. If you plug in a new controller after starting up, you have to click refresh for it to see it. I'm just going to choose the first one here and hit enter. And it brings up this little uh, window here. And as you see, as I press buttons on my keyboard or on my uh, controller here, you can see which buttons they are over here. I can use my little uh, joystick here or the D-pad and make sure everything is working as it is. We can hit close. Same thing if I choose the other one, double click it or hit enter on it. I can now move this and click on these. But of course, as we're saying, you don't need this graphical interface. We can just do JS test without the GTK. And then we're going to give it the device name. Now, all of your hardware, every piece of hardware on your system should show up under forward slash dev on your Linux system. And input devices, keyboards, mouse, game controllers, uh, they should show up under dev input, right? Because they're input devices. And joysticks will show up as JS and then a number. Zero for the first one, one for the second, two for the third. So you can see that I have two here. I'm gonna go ahead and just run JS test on the first one here. And it gives me the screen now. I have my fonts a little bit larger so that you guys can see it in the video, but so it's wrapping around to the next line. But as I move this, you can see the value of my joystick here. The D-pad works similarly, except for it's not pressure sensitive. It just goes straight to a negative or positive number. And then we have our buttons and it will be on or off. Uh, and it updates as you press buttons on which buttons are which. So you can figure out, okay, which button is button eight, which button is button nine, okay? Uh, control C to get out of that. If you wanna do the other joystick, you know, it's the next number up. So JS test dev uh, input JS1 and we can press our buttons on this. Great, control C to exit out of that. Now, I wanted to, again, be able to detect when buttons are pressed and interact with a menu in a shell script. So my first thought was, well, I could just cat out that uh, device. So you can see my autocomplete here, you'll see some of the stuff that I've tried and some of the stuff we're gonna go over in a minute. But if I cat that out, so my first controller here, yeah, for sure, we start getting output here, but it's, basically gibberish, gibberish to us, right? Because it is just uh, the raw input coming through. Now, I thought, oh, okay, well, I know that XXD is a program that can um, give you like the hex codes for stuff when you're giving it raw binary input. So I do that and yeah, I, I thought we could do this. You know, you can kind of see what's happening here. There's a value here. The change is always the same based on 
what buttons we said button one looks like it's 101 or 0101 and button two is 0102 so yeah I could figure out whatever there's probably another value here I think it's this value here is whether that button's being pressed or released uh, and I tried thinking if I could do a while loop with that and no that was getting too complicated so then I realized well if we just run JS test without giving it any input well it gives you a little help menu and it has different modes and one of them is this event mode. So if I come in here and I say, say dash dash event and then give it my first keyboard here, well, it gives the output a little different. And uh, so automatically it just shows this and it says the event type when you first load it up is uh, 130. I guess it's just testing each button. I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, but as I press other buttons, you can see type one is buttons being pressed. Type two seems to be in uh, the, the joystick here and the D-pad is also a type two. So I figured, well, now I can just grep through these lines and when button one has a value of one, do something if button two, so number two has a value of zero or one when it's being pressed, do something. And same for my D-pad up and down. So that's what I did. So let me control C out of that. And I came up with a whole menu script, which I'll show you here in a minute. It's up on, on Pastebin and I'll try to put a link to this in the video description. Uh, but yeah, so let me just go and just say JS test and then I'll while loop into that and I'll just use my autocomplete here. So what we're doing here is we're saying JS test, wait for events on joystick zero, my first joystick here, the green one. And while read, each line is going to be the letter L just for line, right? And then I'm checking values. I'm saying, okay, this variable L, does it contain uh, number one with a value of one? And number two, comma, I'm actually grepping the whole thing here. Now, this is how I did it in the script. And I actually realized just before recording, there is a problem here. I don't want this asterisk at the end. Uh, it wasn't a big deal for the A and B button, but for the, uh, if I was to press on the joystick here, it would actually see that value of two uh, or one. And if it came up with a value of, remember that's a variable from negative 3000 something, well, 3,207, you know, whatever, 32,000. Uh, if it had a one and that asterisk, it would notice, notice sorry, <laughs> the joystick here would show up as A or B. So I got rid of that asterisk at the end. I do have the asterisk at the beginning because there's more on that line. So basically we're looking at this variable. We're saying, does that line end in this, 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 or this? I hope that makes sense. And then if that's true, we're going to either echo button one, button two, button up, or button down. So I will run that and I'll hit B. I will hit A. So we have button one and two. I said that backwards, A and B. And then if I do other buttons, nothing happens because we're it's ignoring those, right? And I go left and right, but if I go up, it says up. If I go down, it goes down. Well, now I can, again, put that into a script and actually instead of just printing stuff to the screen, run functions based on what items are being run. So again, uh, this script is right here. I'll hit enter, it says, and it's not the prettiest. You can obviously fancy this up a little bit with colors and maybe some uh, you know, line highlighting, but what would you like to do? At this point, I can continue, which just exits out of the program, so I can hit A on that. Uh, I can hit A or B to select that. But now if I go down, I can reboot, power off, as long as my user has permissions to do these things. Or I can open Thunar, right? I open that and it opens up my file manager. I can quit out of that. And now I can run my script again. Once I do that, it exits out of the script. So again, uh, I will put a link to this full script down here that I wrote. It's up on Pastebin and you can see how it works. Again, I just have an array of options and then I have some functions here. And what happens here is um, it's going to go selected and it's just going to pull up the first item. So there's something there and it's going to loop through this. And based on what we pick, it's going to go through the next one, uh, either up or down through the array. And then when you select an item, it's going to either continue, which exits or actually run the command that is highlighted. So look over that. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, again, uh, if you just need to create a shell script for that's controlled with a controller like this. Again, my original goal of this was on my arcade. Like if I X have interfaces, I just wanted a simple menu that I could go through without having to break out a keyboard, which I do have one hooked up to my arcade, but it's like tucked away. Uh, and with an arcade, you want to do everything with the game controllers, right? 
So now I can, if I needed to, I, again, I ended up making a, a graphical interface with Godot and using it to grab signals from the controllers because it's very good at doing that. It has a nice setup. Anyway, I'm rambling now. I hope you found this useful. And if you did, think about liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, all those good things. Uh, visit my website, filmsbychris.com. You can search through all my videos. I'm sure I have thousands by now. I've been doing this a long time. And uh, yeah, there's a support section there if you want to support me financially. If not, again, liking and commenting and sharing. I love hearing your comments, as long as they're nice. If you're mean, go away. <laughs> Thanks for watching. As always, I hope that you have a great day.